The other day I was feeling nostalgic, so I went online and I was looking at images of G.I. Joe action figures and vehicles. I loved this stuff as a kid and as a teenager. I don't have my stuff anymore, but one of the things I loved back then and still appreciate now is the excellent artwork that was on both the vehicles and the action figures. It was painted and it made things look just a little more realistic. It was action-packed and fun. One of the things that you'd notice in the first wave of vehicles was that things were very realistic. They only had uh, tanks and jeeps, realistic vehicles, and the card art basically reflected that. But then, come wave two, all of a sudden, we started seeing something that pops up more and more. The buddy hanging out on the back of the vehicle. Now I understand that the toys had foot pegs. You could load up the, the vehicle of your choice with as many action figures as you wanted, and that made for a fun play experience. And I'm not even going to critique these vehicles for having exposed cockpits or driving uh, stations. That's fine. You know, that's a product of the vehicle being fun to play with, being easy to put the action figures in. But the artwork adding an extra buddy hanging out on the back in exposed conditions or right behind a weapon or beside a cannon starts to not make as much sense. Take a look at the Cobra Hiss Tank. This was wave two, and all of a sudden we've got the leader of Cobra hanging out on the back of the vehicle, completely exposed. I guess it was just that much fun, he just couldn't say no. Here's another one, the Cobra Water Moccasin. Again, we've got a soldier on the side, maybe, I think he's likely to fall off, considering how fast the thing is going, but Cobra Commander himself is hanging out there? Now, for this vehicle, we've got a guy hanging out on the back. The original vehicle that looks the exact same and is just a repaint, the original was a G.I. Joe vehicle called the Vamp. For Cobra, all of a sudden we've got a buddy hanging out on the back right behind the missiles. He's going to catch a whole face full of back blasts. We've got the Cobra More. It was also known as the Hydrofoil. Plenty of buddies there. I'm not going to critique them for having a job to do, like being in the gunnery station, but take a look at Baroness and Storm Shadow. I guess they're just hanging out in the back, tossing barrels out for fun. You know what? That does kind of look like fun. As things went on, it got even crazier. We've got the Snowcat here, which is an Arctic vehicle, but then poor Alpine is hanging out there without any fur coat. The G.I. Joe Devilfish has Beachhead piloting it. Looks cool. But where exactly is Wetsuit standing there? Is he just holding on with his arms and letting his feet slap around in the water? He's also standing right behind a missile and I gotta be honest, that's not very safe. I'll give the Dreadnoughts a pass. The Dreadnoughts aren't too bright, so if the Dreadnoughts want to hang out on the side of the Thunder Machine as they go into battle, that makes sense to me. The Cobra Wolf. Now this point, G.I. Joe is halfway through its lifespan and things are starting to get a little sillier as they go on. But you know what? It's an okay, unique looking Arctic vehicle and we've got a pilot and a co-pilot in protected canopies. Then the poor Techno Viper just has to hang out and be exposed to the elements. G.I. Joe makers Hasbro may have had an idea that this one didn't make too much sense because look, they cover up the buddy hanging out on the back with a, with a sticker trying to advertise something else. You know what? Why is Hardball of all people hanging out on the back of a swamp vehicle? His whole thing is just that he's a former baseball player that decided he wanted to join G.I. Joe. That was something that started happening right about now. All of a sudden, football players, basketball players, baseball players, samurais, they all started getting jobs at G.I. Joe. It was a lot like WWF in the 80s. People had devil jobs. They weren't just a wrestler. They were also a repo man or an evil dentist. The Tiger Cat is kind of a crazier version of the Snow Cat, and I'm not sure anymore. Is this an Arctic vehicle? We've got Frostbite in his winter gear driving the thing, but then on the back, we've got Dusty in his desert gear. The Cobra Rage. Well, you know what? We've got a bunch of buddies hanging out on the back. These guys are now all deaf. I like the septic tank here. It was basically a remodel of the Cobra Hiss tank. And if we look back, of course, we had Cobra Commander hanging off the back of that, but now we've got two buddies hanging off. The Parasite, a Cobra vehicle that was an armored transport. The perfect vehicle for tons of buddies, but these buddies weren't told that they're supposed to be hanging out inside where it's safe. 
finally, we've got the G.I. Joe Patriot. I'm not sure what kind of a vehicle this is, but these guys hanging out on the back are in extreme danger because look, there's guns absolutely everywhere. If they don't get knocked off, they're going to go deaf. They're probably going to get caught by some backdraft on some missiles shooting out under their butts. This thing's crazy. Let me know what kind of weird tropes you notice about the toys from your childhood. Talk to you later.